Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna tell you about the best JupyterLab extension. Yes, you heard it right, the best JupyterLab extension that you didn't even know existed. I know you must be thinking that how did I miss this? Well, don't worry, because today we are unveiling this secret weapon that's going to take your JupyterLab game to a whole new level. So, the best JupyterLab extension is none other than the Jupyter AI extension. The Jupyter AI extension is not just another add-on, it's a game changer. It seamlessly integrates AI capabilities directly into your Jupyter Lab interface, empowering you to explore, analyze, and create with unprecedented efficiency. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to go to the Jupyter AI documentation and here you can see that we have installation steps. Firstly, you have tabs to install Jupyter Lab via the pip and the conda so if you are working with windows operating system then you can use pip to install the jupyter lab and if you are working with the mac operating system then you can use conda if you scroll down a little bit you have the installation steps for installing the jupyter ai again you have two options one for the windows operating system and the other one for the mac operating system so i am working on the windows operating system so i'm gonna use the pip command to install the jupyter lab extension inside my jupyter lab environment so i'm gonna copy this command i'm gonna head back to my command prompt and from here i'm gonna go to the jupyter virtual environment that i've just created by using the command cd dot dot and once you are inside the virtual environment of your jupyter i'm gonna paste the command that i've just copied and hit enter so once you hit enter, you will see that your Jupyter AI will start downloading and installing on your system. Alright, so the Jupyter AI extension has been successfully installed. Now the next step is to launch the Jupyter Lab. And in order to launch it, I am going to use the command Jupyter Lab, then place a space. After the space, you have to add a full stop and hit enter and it is going to launch the Jupyter Lab for us. Alright, so up till now, we have downloaded and installed our extension and we have launched the Jupyter Lab. Now we have to configure the Jupyter Lab in order to use the extension. If you see at the left navigation menu, you will see a new icon which was not previously present in the Jupyter Lab. So if you click on it, it is going to show you a new interface. And the new interface says, Welcome to Jupyter AI. To get started, please select a language model to check with from the settings panel. So I'm going to click on the settings and here you have to select the language model and the embedding model. For the language model, I'm going to click on the drop down menu and from that, I am going to select the open AI gpt 3.5 turbo because i'm going to integrate chat gpt in it and then for the embedding model from the drop down menu i'm gonna select open ai text embedding ada 002 extension and once you have selected the language model and embedding model the next thing is to add the api key and api key is actually the key of your open ai account so you have to generate an API key from your OpenAI account and paste it here and to do so, let's head to our OpenAI account. Once you land on this page, you have to go to the left navigation menu and select the symbol of a lock which says API keys. Then you have to click on API key and after you land on the page of the API keys, you have to click on create new secret key in order to create a new API key. I'm gonna call it Jupyter, you can give any name to your secret key and once you click on create secret key, it is gonna give you the secret key, you simply have to copy it and use it. I'm gonna delete this secret key after completing this video because you do not want anyone else to have your API key. So once you have copied the API key, go back to your Jupyter lab and then in the place of the API key, I'm gonna paste the key and simply click on save changes. And once you do that, you will land on the page that says, Hi there, I am Jupyter Not, your programming assistant. So the name of your assistant for Jupyter Lab is Jupyter Not. And it says that you can ask me a question using the text box below. So if you scroll down, you will see that you have a text box. And here you can provide prompt in simple English language, just like you can give prompts to chat GPT. And it is going to generate the response for us. So here I'm going to prompt it how to install jupyter ai let's hit enter and wait for the response all right so the response has been generated and it has provided us all the steps that you can follow in order to install jupyter ai it has provided us the commands and the steps to create the virtual environment and other steps to install the jupyter lab and the extension as well 
So that's a really cool thing that you can easily use chat GPT like assistant in your Jupyter lab as well. Let's move one step further and now I'm going to show you how you can use this Jupyter AI extension with your notebook. For that I've created a new notebook and the first thing that you need to do is to import the extension that you have just added in your notebook as well. And to do so you have to write the command percentage load underscore ext Jupyter underscore AI hit run and you will see that it will successfully load our added extension inside our Jupyter notebook. Once the extension is loaded, now let's see which AI models are present. So for that I'm gonna use the command percentage AI and after that I'm gonna write list. Once you hit run, it is going to give you a list of all the available AI models which are currently present. And you can also see the status of all these and you can also see that the environment variable for which of these is set. Now we have to set the environment variable for our required model. Since we want to integrate chat GPT with the Jupyter lab, so we have to set the environment variable for the OpenAI model. And for that, I'm gonna scroll down and add a new cell. And inside the cell, I'm gonna use the command pip install and I'm going to provide the model name which is OpenAI and run it. In this way, OpenAI will be installed and not only chat GPT but rather all the models which are supported by OpenAI will be available in your Jupyter lab. Now the next step is to set the environment variable for the OpenAI. For that I am gonna create a new cell and firstly inside the cell I am going to import OS. The purpose of importing OS is it enables us to set the environment variable. So in order to set the environment variable I am gonna use the command os.environment and inside the square bracket, I am going to pass the variable name which is OpenAI API key. Then place an equal to sign and inside the double quote, I am going to paste the secret key of my OpenAI that I previously created. Once this is done, hit run and now you will be able to write prompts inside your Jupyter lab as well and run different magic commands on it. So now let's see what are the magic commands and how you can use them. In order to use the magic command, you have to write double percentage AI. Then after that, you have to define the model that you want to use. I want to use chat GPT, so I'm gonna write chat GPT here. You can use any format such as HTML, JSON, etc. as the model. After that, I'm gonna define the prompt. So here, I'm going to say generate a function that computes and prints the factorial of an integer. So I want it to generate the code for me for calculating the factorial of an integer. Now let's go ahead and run this to see how it responds. Alright, so the response has been generated and you can clearly see that the first line is the function definition which takes an integer n. Then it has provided us brief explanation and also provided us the code for calculating the factorial and also shown us an example. But you can clearly notice that it has provided us the response in the markdown format which is the default format for chat GPT. So if you want it to have in the code format, then you can set it simply by using the minus F flag. Since I want to get the response in the form of code format, so I'm going to go ahead and edit my prompt. And after per double percentage AI chat GPT, I'm going to place minus F and then I'm going to define the format which I want to use. So I'm going to say code. And when you run it, now it is going to generate the response in the form of code for you because we have defined the format to be code. Now let's see another example. What if you want the response to be in the math format? Then how can you do that? In order to do so, I'm going to add a new cell. And inside the cell, once again, I'm going to use double percentage AI. Then define the model which is chat GPT. After that, I'm going to say hyphen f and then math then on the next line you have to provide it the prompt so i'm gonna say generate the linear equation for a parabola without any explanation now let's run it to see whether it gives us the equation and yes it has provided us the equation in the math format for the parabola and in this way you can generate different responses for different equations in math format up till now, we have only been generating response for a single cell. But if we want to generate the response for the code in another cell, and you can also do it using this extension in the Jupyter lab. And to do so, you have to create a new cell and write double percentage AI chat GPT. Then on the next line, I am going to write 
explain the code below. But before explaining the cell number, I'm going to go ahead and add a new cell above this cell. And inside it, I am going to copy and paste the code which was generated for generating the factorial of an integer. After that, I am going to move to my magic command cell. And below the line that says explain the code below, I am going to open a set of curly braces. Inside which, I am going to use the in operator. And after in operator, I am going to use a set of square bracket inside which you have to provide the cell name where your code is present. Since my code for the factorial is placed inside the cell number 12, so I am going to pass 12 inside the square bracket. So once we run it, it is going to go inside the cell which is present in the square bracket. And since we have said to explain the code, then it is going to explain the code which is present in the cell number 12. And make sure that the n in the n operator should be small. Now let's run it. And you can see that it has provided us an explanation that says the given code defines a function factorial that takes an integer n as input and calculates the factorial of n using a for loop. So you can see that it has provided us a good explanation of the code which was present in a different cell inside a Jupyter notebook. These tasks were being performed using the Jupyter notebook but what if you want to use the Jupyter AI chat? So I'm going to prompt it forward slash generate and I'm going to say generate a demo for the complete usage of pandas and pandas AI library. Okay, now let's run it and wait for it to generate the response. And it says that I will get started on your notebook. It may take a few minutes, but I will reply here when the notebook is ready. So let's wait for it to create a notebook. Okay, so it says that I have created your notebook and saved it to the location. I am still learning how to create notebooks, so please review all the code. You can also access it using your Jupyter Lab. So click on this folder icon and here is your notebook. So let's click on it. And you can see that here is a notebook whose title is Complete Usage of Pandas and Pandas AI. It has provided us a brief introduction and has provided us the code with headings for all the steps. For the first, we have the steps for loading the data and there are different cells for doing it. Then we have some steps for data cleaning, data manipulation, data visualization, data analysis, and machine learning with pandas. So it's a really cool thing that instead of writing all the code all by yourself, you simply have to give it the correct prompt and it is going to create a complete notebook with all the code along with explanation of the code for each cell. So in this way, you can use this amazing extension of the Jupyter Lab to enhance your code efficiency by allowing it to generate the code for you instead of you writing the code inside the notebook yourself. So I'll encourage all of you to use this amazing extension inside your Jupyter Lab to reduce your coding time and improve your work efficiency. Thank you.